Hey guys, how you doing? New project today. Dodge Ram 1500 right there. Problem is, no power steering. These big tires, it is a bugger to turn. So, so we took a look at the power steering pump. Guess what? Grab the pulley. Uh-oh. Snap right off. I don't know what happened to it. Anyway, regardless, doesn't work. So how do you remove and take one off? Look at that. Two lines. You got the pressure side right there, and you got the return side right there. That is your reservoir. <coughs> On here, four bolts. One, two, three, four. That's all there is to it. Now, we get up here, we've already pulled that one off and put a new one on. As you can see, we got the bolts in there already. One, two, three, and the fourth one there, as you'll see, is a stud is broken off right there. There's a couple wires that have to go into that. One being the ground cable from the battery, which has a terminal that is now broken off, as you can see right there. With the new lug on there. These two wires, you can see the old terminals right there in that bolt. So, what we're going to have to do is, this here, if you look at it closely, you'll see that is not a nut on a stud. That's actually a bolt with a nut there. So what we'll have to do, we'll heat that up in the vise with a torch, take that nut off of there, well, we will crimp on a couple new terminals right onto here and onto the lug, and we'll put it back together. We'll put the serpentine bell back on, and we should be ready to roll. Stay tuned. So, what's involved in changing a power steering pump, you ask? Well, look at it. You get two lines in the pack of pump. One is for the high pressure right there. The other one is the return line. So, that's a low pressure. All we got to do, the bracket... Right there, we unbolt the, the four bolts off of there. Because if you don't do that, you will not take this. This pulley will not come off very easily because you gotta use a little uh, puller to get that off. And first, you gotta get this thing off first. So we were lucky. We went to the records and we bought another pump for a couple of bucks with the bracket, everything installed on it. So all we gotta do is take the four bolts off, and that's it. Okay, we've got the new pump in place right there. The lines are now put on, the high pressure and the return line. Very simple. The high pressure has a clamp fitting. The other one has just got a hose clamp on, if you can see it down there. There's really no pressure there at all. Anyway, there's a, we have the bolts back in. There's three of the big long bolts in down here. This one here is actually, it looks like a stud, but it's not. It's actually a bolt with a stud on the back side of it. And you'll see on here, there's two wires right here. These are ground wires, as well as the one for the battery. All the lugs are broken off. You can see the old one is right, let me just show you. It's right on there. So what we got to do is we got to put that in the vise, heat that up, and uh, take that nut off. We'll put a couple new lugs on those wires there. And then I'll show you how to put the serpentine belt back on very easily. And then we'll put some fluid in her. And it'll be ready to go to try it out. Okay, we're going to have to heat up that nut to get that nut off. So what we do, bring your torches over, auction and acetylene is turned on. Just got a small tip on here, but you know what, for what we're doing tonight, I would normally put a bigger tip on. Oops. So all we want to do is just heat up this nut. You'll see it's going to turn a little bit hotter in a second. So it'll start to glow. And all we're going to do is expand that nut away from that stud. It won't take much, I don't think, on this. And yes, that flame is hot. At the tip of that envelope, that blue envelope right there, you're talking about over 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, as you can see, it's getting warm there. Okay, let me use a wrench right here. Okay. Boy, I was wrong. Oh, there it goes. Not too bad. So, turn the torches off. Turn your tanks off, because the acetylene and oxygen are very expensive. So that's good. Probably if I had a little bit of oil here, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't, uh, Hurt it all to put a bit of oil in there. Let's just take what I got handy. Put some inside of there. 
Nope. Anyway, we'll get her off. Okay, we just, Michael just got the last one tightened up there. Okay, now, uh, that one's tight. The other three, tighten them up again. And then we're going to put the wires on the stud. We're ready to roll. Okay, we got the one wire strip back here. I put a new terminal lug on right there. Michael just stripped off this one here. He's going to put those two wires together. And what we're going to use on that is one connector right there. A yellow ring right there. Michael's going to hold that. Now, what I want to show you here is on these crimpers right here, these are a good set of high-quality ratchet crimpers. That'll give you a fantastic crimp. But what you want to do, if you notice on these crimpers, one side is flat there. The other side has a relief there on either side for the wire. So we know the wire comes out this side. So what you do, put that in there. Bring that right up to the end like that. So that way, when that crimps that down, that'll give a little bit of a relief around the wire so it doesn't crimp the wire itself. And you give that, so we'll just, that's just locked in there right there now, almost. We'll put that on the wire and give it a good crimp, and guess what? She'll be ready to go. Okay, I've got the wires, both of them pushed into that yellow ring right there. You'll see that they're right through the other side. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll crimp that. And you see there, the ratchet is done. Now you see how it leaves a little dent right there. A little recess right there for the wire. The wire doesn't get crunched. That's a good solid connection. You could almost, that's almost as good as a, like a Nico press. So what we'll do, we're going to have to put that back in the cable there. We'll have to trim this off a little bit there. And you know what? We're going to be really, really close to a wire, but I think we're going to have enough there to get this done. So we're almost ready to roll. This truck's going to power steer in a few minutes. Okay, we got the two wires on there now. We're just going to hold that terminal straight there so it doesn't pull. And Michael, tighten that right down there now. It always pays to have nice tools. You know what? That flat ratchet, I've had that one for probably 35, 40 years, and it still works. There. Okay, that's that's good and solid there now. Now this is an alternator wire. Generally, I wouldn't want to have the two of them tight together. There is loom on this one here, holding that. So I think we'll, we should just stand it off there. Another one, the side by side. You don't want to have a positive and a negative right close together in case they rub on each other. Now, I'm not even sure if that's where that wire went, but we'll call that good. So all the other bolts are tightened up. Next thing to do, put the serpentine belt on. The serpentine belt. And how do you know how to put it on? Well, look at that little picture here on the top of the front of the motor here. You'll see, we don't have air conditioning, so there's no AC, so the belt is going to go around like this, the, the, through the uh, alternator, past the tensioner, around, back up, around the power steering, and right back across. So we're going to get that on there, and I'll show you how to loosen the tensioner off. Here is a side view, and what we're going to do, we can use that one there. He just, Michael just pulled that tensioner with the Johnson bar. See that? That'll loosen that right off. The serpentine is going to slide right on, and it's an automatic tensioner right there. Okay, I got the belt over here now. Michael's got it all figured out here. Now you just, all you got to do is back the tensioner off, put it around the tensioner, and we'll be all ready to roll. Well, we got the belt on now. All we got is we're a little bit short right here to get it past this pulley. So Michael's going to put the Johnson bar on there with a 15 millimeter socket. He's going to crank that over this way. And when he does that, watch this. This belt will just drop right on there. It looks like it's on to me. There. It's on there. Okay. Everything looks like it's good right there. All the way around. You took that off, we're ready to go. That's, that is already pre-tightened up right there. Now all we got to do, put some fluid in it, and we're all set. Now, these Dodges, I believe that what they use is an ATF-4 right there. One liter should do it. So we're going to put that in the, and if it doesn't work, I told you the wrong advice. Okay, Michael's going to put a bit of fluid in there now. You can bring that up close to the top of it there. And is it going down at all? It's yeah, going to it's bubble bubbling. down a bit while it fills up the pump there. What you do not want to do is you do not want to run one of these pumps dry. The veins in it will be taken out in no time. There, you can see that. 
I would probably just wait for a second, and I think that'll be good. We'll let it run for a second, then we'll check the level. You don't want to have it too full either, because the fluid, when it gets warm, it will expand, and it will come out of the top, and you get it all over your motor, all the oil. Okay, Michael's going to clean up the tools, and one thing he did, brilliant. I didn't mention the first video, but he did this. He took off the positive terminal of the battery. I think that's a probably a good thing, because now it will not complete the circuit. So he'll put that back on, and then we'll be ready to fire this Dodge up. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's fire it up. Okay, now you'll turn the steering wheel. Oh, I hear that pump. Okay, turn it back and forth, all the way this way. Okay, back the other way. You're gonna pump line if it's gonna be the air in it. Back the other way. That'll work there out of it. took about probably three quarters of that bottle of fluid. So about three quarters of a liter. It's almost quiet now. It's looking good. Works good. Okay, we got a little bit of bubble at the top there, but I'm just going to check this dipstick. It's nice and clean. Put that in there. Pull that out and look. Look at that. Right up to the line. Beautiful. So, power steering pump is on. We have one that failed. One has been replaced in this Dodge 1500. Put the air cleaner back on and this thing is ready to go. Back out to the mud. Thanks for enjoying the video. Rating, subscribe, subscribing, and commenting. Time to take her for a test run. Out it goes. I think Dodge just barely fits in the little shop. That's good. Just remember there's that uh, plow blade back there, eh? Right? Well, there's gonna go. Try that power stern out. <laughs> there he goes. Nicely done. Now we gotta go clean this mess up.